All right, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Firth, founding field advisory board member with NUMI, and it is my pleasure to do our second section uh, segment for the day, which is actually our training session today, which we are live streaming on Facebook. Now, we've already finished our corporate call here, and we know there are people logged in from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US, Latin America, all over the place, the Philippines, Africa, uh, even in, uh, in Europe right now, there are people logged in, which is fantastic. So this session that we're about to go through is a passion of mine. Um, here at NUMI, it's all about new, a new you starts with NUMI. And in terms of creating a new you today, we're going to teach you some social media strategies that a lot of the uh, people in the industry of network marketing have never had the privilege to learn because they've never had a sponsor or an upline or a company that actually understands this particular topic well enough to give you a good grounding on it. So with that in mind, I'm going to now share my screen and get right into it real quick. So we should be over and done with within 30 minutes. So it's all about creating a new you with social media professionalism. Now, our aim of this workshop today, if you're taking notes, is to professionalize the entire team of NUMI members across the world to be the best in the industry. The second priority and aim is to protect our NUMI brand from damage done by spammers. Now, I'm sure you would agree with me, it's not just the network marketing industry, but a lot of people in home-based business think that they, all they need to do is continuously talk about their product line every single day, and they don't realize they're actually doing more brand damage than good by continuing to do that. Number three, with built into that as well is also important to protect your own personal brand from damage. And again, Sometimes knowledge is power, as they say, and if no one's ever told you some actions you're doing that are damaging your brand, you would never even know. So today we're going to point that out. Number four, to enlighten you about creating a tribe, write that word down, tribe versus a fake bunch of friends, right? And again, some people on social media, they just think if I add 5,000 people on social media that I don't interact with and I spam my product every day, I'll get more customers. Bop on, that's not true. And finally, number five, to create an ocean of fruitful leads that you could literally fish from this ocean forever with new leads for Numi and never ever stop. Now that has been my journey over now about 13, 14 years in doing exactly that. So some did you knows to kick off. Did you know there are now 2.8 billion people on Facebook in 2021? But did you also know the average Facebook user spends two hours and 24 minutes a day on Facebook? And I should preface that by saying, I believe they waste two hours and 24 minutes. So today I'm going to talk about dollar productive activities on social media rather than wasting your time. Did you know also that most network marketers are poorly trained on the topic, hence they do a lot of brand damage and, you know, it's not unique to the field. A lot of corporate teams have no clue how to harness social media either. And I have had an experience in my past with a company where the head of marketing had his head um, in traditional marketing. So he kept coming out and giving traditional marketing tips and hints to people which don't work in network marketing. So it's a very different beast. And finally, Facebook is just one platform and they all require a different uh, approach. So when I say that, let me be really straight with you. You know, for me, Facebook has been a pot of gold ongoing and it still is to this very day. I'm not an expert in Instagram, so we won't be focusing on that today. I do have Instagram pages. Um, I'm not an expert in LinkedIn, um, but I do have a very fruitful LinkedIn profile. Today, we're just going to isolate the topic down to one thing, which is building relationships using Facebook. Having said that, I want to give you a tip and say, firstly, avoid the vortex before you push the button. So personally, as I've said, I have sponsored hundreds and hundreds of people over the years using Facebook, hundreds, right? Um, but big point, don't become the Facebook zombie. What's that? Somebody who starts flicking through their newsfeed. Your intention was to get on and be productive. You have your phone in your hand. It, look, it happened to me too. So, you know, uh, three fingers pointing at, uh, one finger pointing at you, three fingers pointing back at me. I was sitting down, I was responding to something and then I saw a funny video and I watched it and then it sent me to another funny video, which sent me to another funny video. And next minute I thought, what am I doing? I have just absorbed 20 minutes of my day like a zombie. So don't do that. Practice dollar productive activities. If you want to go crown and new me, don't get distracted like the zombie. And Facebook, and I mean this can be worse than cocaine, guys. It is very addictive if you don't 
take control of the vortex. So don't, don't let the tail wag the dog, you wag the tail, right? So let's talk about the secrets to success. Firstly, this is what people see, the tip of the iceberg. They go, hmm, I see lots of interesting posts for Michael Firth, that must be how he makes his money. I'll just duplicate those posts. The problem is the biggest reason for my social media success is not even visible. Today, I'm gonna to pull the veil back for you and you'll see where it's hidden. So that is being interested, not interesting. Write that down, be interested, not interesting. So there's some great books on this topic. Right now, the, the book on the left there, um, Tribes by Seth Godin. Let me take you back. In the mortgage industry as a national sales coach, Facebook was brand new. I had people say to me, you know, join me on Facebook. And I said to a few mates, get some real friends. Um, and I was really anti Facebook because I thought, oh, that's ridiculous. Why would you talk to someone online when you can see them face to face? That was me. But I was charged by the CEO of the company I was working for to go out and research social media, understand it, and then teach mortgage brokers how to make money doing it. Now, I did that, teaching them how to make money without selling, by reading this book, Tribes, by Seth Godin. And he basically made a comment in there that said, if you have 1,000 people back in the day on a social media platform that are highly engaged, a tribe, so to speak, where people know you, like you, and trust you, you can make a fortune doing anything. So I read that book and I put into practice what he said and it worked for me. And then I left the mortgage industry, moved into a glutathione product. And guess what? Social media lit up for me in that business as well. And at one point, not proud to say this because this is not proper network marketing, but I had the highest personally introduced people in the previous company for quite some time, sorry, second highest in the world. And then I realized the error of my ways. It's network marketing is not about introducing 2 billion people yourself. It's about introducing a smaller team and then helping baby steps and duplication. Having said that, the tribes concept means you will always have a never ending list of people if you follow what we're going to talk about today. The second book, when I was 18 years of age, I read How to Win Friends and Influence People. Type in yes if you have read that book. My God, it was magnificent for me. Um, and then there's been an, a, a, a changed version of this, knowing that social media came on the, uh, on the planet. And it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age. I can surmise something out of that book very quickly. Everyone's saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at my food, look at my face, look at my friends, look at my selfie. No one's asking questions. No one is showing a genuine interest in other people, right? So questions are the most powerful thing you have at your fingertips right now, not statements, right? So those two books would be highly recommended if you're going to get into this. Now, when we're talking about building a tribe, let me just cover off a few things. Number one, everything I'm going to show today, don't try and be me. Be authentic. Don't try and be something you're not. So you want to have a, a first, a quick think about what's your personal brand? How do you want to be perceived in the world? You know, determine that before you get started. I had a great coach who was a speaker coach at one point, and he helped with personal branding. Uh, Pete Crofts was his name from a place called the Humorversity, believe it or not. And he used to teach um, speakers in the corporate world how humor fed into everything. And he also talked about personal branding. And he asked me this question. He said, Michael, what's your social value? I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, you go ask that question to people who are following on social media. And they came back and said, I said, what's my social value? Why do you follow me? And they said, inspiration, motivation, ideas, business coaching. I'm like, wow, that's why my tribe was following me. Now, you might be different to that. You might be the, um, the glutathione guy, right? I mean, uh, Brandon Holtz, one of the people I've seen in the team that does a lot of posts on glutathione and, and health and wellness. Fantastic. That means he's branding himself in that way. So what I'm suggesting is have a consideration before you start is how do you want to be perceived? What is your personal brand? Is it business coaching and um, Numi glutathione products? Or is it just, I'm a, I'm a health person? What is it for you? I don't know. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. But I do have a quick question as we get going on a tribe. Do you want to build a legacy? Or do you want to be right all the time? <laughs> what do I mean? Well, there's some things that will trigger your audience. Now, I'm not going to suggest you stop or start doing any of these. I'm just going to bring it up. Firstly, did you know these are the things that will trigger people? Sex, politics, religion, vaccines, don't even say that one out loud, gender, and even MLM. So what am I suggesting? Well, if you have a profile that is extreme right or extreme left on a political side and you want to talk about that, go for it. If that's who you are and that's your tribe, you'll be alienating the other half, just saying. Even when it comes to religion, I, am, I have my beliefs 
and I have my crucifix hanging around my neck and, and I believe what I believe, but I'm fairly light on the way I am on my tribe online by personal choice. I got some beautiful friends oops, who talk about their beliefs in, and different things every day and great. I'm not trying to change anyone. I'm just saying when you're looking at your own profile, ask yourself the question, how do you want to be perceived? Now, if somebody comes on my profile and they are anti-vax, I don't rip them apart. If someone comes on my wall and they are pro-vax, I don't rip them apart. What I do is I allow them to have their opinions because opinions are free and that's all they are is an opinion, right? So I'm saying to be just cautious and careful because I was talking to someone the other day and they said, you know, it's called social media, but at the moment with some the way some people are handling themselves in an arrogant fashion on all these topics on the screen, it's becoming the anti-social media right so you don't want your profile to be the anti-social platform you want to engage people in conversation and so forth without alienating so again i'll just reiterate what i'm saying i'm not saying if you are religious stop doing what you're doing if you are pro something i'm not saying don't do that i'm just saying go like a helicopter come up look down on your profile like the person looking at it and have a think about how you're being perceived is you know because self-awareness as a leader is a very valuable thing very valuable thing. So I mentioned MLM in there. You probably noticed I don't MLM myself every day long, all day long. I'll tell you a funny story of what not to do. I had someone the other day add me on social media and I sent a welcome message to everyone. I'm saying, hey, buddy, how are you? You know, thanks for the friend request. Um, just wondering, how do we know each other? We've got a few common friends. No reply. On his wall, it said MLM professional you know, blah, 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 and all this stuff, MLM, 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 that's the only message you got. So about a week later, I just went and I said, hey, we'll call him Fred. Hey, Fred, thanks for the friend request. Uh, I noticed you saw my other message, but I'm just, you know, wondering how do we know each other? Always love to meet new people. Such a big, wonderful world out there. No response a week later, right? So here is what not to do. That guy calls himself a network marketing professional. He is somebody who does not understand relationships and people skills, because all he's doing is spamming his business, waiting for the fish to jump in the boat, but he's not addressing the number one issue of people skills, which is being genuinely interested in interacting with others. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Well, let's start on the first topic, which is being interesting. All right. So this is a concept I created uh, 14, 13, 14 years ago. Um, other, other people have taken it on board since I didn't, I didn't uh, patent it as such, but it was a concept I created first in the world, which was called the four faces of Facebook. You can take it on board if you like. It's my observation. So maybe get a piece of paper out, draw it and cross it into four. And I just want to each quadrant just cover off, right? The word professor in the top left-hand corner, right? The per salesperson, the word salesperson in the right top corner, uh, family guy or girl, bottom left-hand corner and party animal in the other one. So what do I mean? Let's focus on professor. Let's say you're watching Facebook right now and you're looking and you see somebody who starts uh, posting lots of information about glutathione um, and weight loss and energy levels and doctor stuff and what have you. What would you perceive of that person if you started watching that over a period of time? You would see them as an expert in their field, no doubt, if they did a lot of it, right? Okay. So with that in mind, that's brilliant. That's one way of branding yourself in something. Same again, if someone was in the mortgage industry, if you see a post uh, saying the, the, the Reserve Bank changed their interest rates today, this is the effect on people. Here's the interest rates from this bank. No, make sure you consider fees with this one. Right, Craig Melton will relate to all this being in the mortgage industry like I was. Um, so all that sort of stuff, that's great. But if that's all you do, and you did just the glutathione thing and wellness or just the mortgage industry thing on your Facebook wall. It's awesome, but it's boring as bat poo. <laughs> so I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's now talk about the salesperson. Has anyone ever seen this person on Facebook? I have the best juice in the world. If you take this, you'll lose weight. If you do this, it's a miracle this. And that's all I do every single day. Ever seen that type? And yes, if you had. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting your company out there, but if that's all you do, it's going to repel everybody. You can overdo it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a balancing act with this in a minute. Now, bottom left-hand corner, what's this? You know, here's me with my kids enjoying uh, the beach on the weekend. Here is uh, me, proud father with my child that just, you know, graduated with something like that. You know, here's me having an awesome lunch with friends. That's social. That's what Facebook was invented for, right? And then the bottom right-hand corner, have you ever seen anybody? Here's a photograph of me on the weekend looking very... Uh, liberated is the words my mum used to use, drunk, 
and a photograph from a great well-meaning friend posted on Facebook. Uh-oh, brand damage, right? We've all seen it. So here's the thing. We see all these quadrants every day on Facebook and they're real, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch on a balance that I would suggest for you. I want you to hop back on your profile, go up as a helicopter, look down and ask yourself what percentage of your time are you selling versus connecting? Okay, so down the bottom, my recommendation on a personal Facebook page, if you don't want to be seen as that annoying network marketing spammer, you should have 80% of your posts in the bottom two, which is being yourself. I'll talk more about the party animal in a positive light in a minute, but just down the bottom, personality, be you, be authentic yourself, and then no more than maybe 20% on average, and sometimes I'm up to 50%. Of the business stuff and sometimes i'm down to 10 or five percent but on average maybe aim for about 20 percent of your posts being of a business nature now the most attractive things out there just ask any woman are two things heart and humor so the party animal has a negative side but the funny person has an attractive side so whether you're and i'm not going to try and turn you into something you're not again consider what's your strength now, if I pick one person I know really well, Nicole Regato is known for her gigantic heart. And online, when she says things from the heart, she attracts this beautiful crowd who adore her, right? So that's heart. Me, I've got a heart, but that wasn't my strength. I might say something funny every now and then, and that might get a bit of engagement because that's who I am genuine, genuinely, who, how I am. And I'm not asking you to change who you are. I'm just saying, think which one of these is your strengths, right? So heart and humor. So the bottom ones here, remember this statement before we get started. Personality. You are the brand. People don't care about Numi till they like you, know you, like you, and trust you. So personality. You are the brand. What are you doing to boost your brand first? Second tip, do you need a business page? No, you don't at all. Now, do I have business pages? Yes, I do. Did I start with them? No, I didn't. I didn't start with them until I got a really good engaged tribe on my personal profile. Then I went into that. Now, the tip is if you are going to go down the path of creating a business page, please note from a compliance perspective, you cannot call your page Numi Australia, Numi Sunshine Coast, Numi Honduras. Um, you're not allowed to. The word Numi cannot be at the front and you can't use a location. Um, you couldn't call it Numi Global Achievers. That's breaching compliance as well. But what I could do is go Global Achievers dash Numi. So there is a number of pages online now, and some of them started with Numi at the front. They all got contacted by compliance and they've all moved the word Numi to the back of the page. Why did we do this? We want to make sure that whenever anyone has a brand new prospect, they don't go onto social media and accidentally click on a page pretending to be the company, and that protects all our interests. So I'm confident not having my page start with Numi, knowing that um, all my prospects won't accidentally click on somebody else's page either. So it makes it a very fair playing field for the world. So you could have XYZ Numi, not a problem. Just don't do it the other way around. All right. Now, do you even need a page? Well, if you're going to go through this today, I don't believe you do straight away. If you want one, fantastic. Just remember, you double your efforts. You've got to stay active on your personal profile. Then you've got to go, oh, I've got to stay active on a business profile every day as well. Twice as much to think about. So not saying don't do it. Not saying it doesn't work. Works great for some people. But try not to do it uh, you know, in and without doing getting your personal profile moving first. Now, I want to show you some uh, stat changes. Let's say you're on LinkedIn, or let's say you have a business page. People think it should all be business. Uh, uh people connect with businesses. So people first and businesses second. So if the owner of a business or the face of a business is someone you like you're more likely to connect with them. So if you do have a business page, just reverse the stats. Instead of being 80% personality, 20% business, reverse it. Just go 80% business, but chuck a little bit of personality in there as well because people deal with people they know, like, and trust, right? So let's move on now. What are some of the things you could do? I'm not going to tell you how to be yourself, <laughs> but I'm going to share some obvious things. What do people do when they're using social media to connect. Well, they talk about their great friends with photographs and having fun. They have proud parents out there, maybe good times they're enjoying, um, great food. You know, we never used to photograph their food 10 years ago, but now we do. Um, sunsets, I love those, right? Um, lifestyle photographs, which is great if you're building a brand and positive quotes, it shows you're a positive person. Now, do I put a positive quote every single day? No, anything done every single day only can eventually become monotonous, anything, right? No matter whether it's positive or not. So I do put them in, but not every single post. 
on the Heart and Humour site, share a funny post. That's one way to engage people. Poke fun at yourself, not others, not others. Poke fun at yourself. I do a lot of that because um, you want it to show you're human. And again, I'm not saying be inauthentic. I'm saying reveal the bits of you you're comfortable with. And some are very private people. I'm a very public person. You find the balance for yourself. If you're talking about heart, like I said, Nicole Regatta, heartwarming posts, right? Making a difference posts, um, you know, revealing your passion posts, things that you're passionate about. Um, the key here is with all of these things at the bottom, be your authentic self, all right? A post a day minimum is required to stay top of mind, just so we're clear, right? Now, let's talk about the top. What could you do? Glutathione blogs, great. You could go read somebody else's, change 20% of the words and put up your own. You could share glutathione posts from uh, the company. You could share them from other individuals. You can write health articles. You can share articles around health and wellness. It helps to brand you as that professor in that space. Um, you might post the doctor's advisory board photographs. Why would you do that? Well, let me tell you a funny thing. We do have competitors out there who are very fearful of our product breakthrough saying it's just water. So how do you drown out that BS? Well, you put up the doctor's advisory board photographs. Why? Because the doctors are very smart people. They were all using precursors before, and now they go, Numi, Hydrostat's the next frontier. Why would a doctor have their profile up in their advisory board if the product was rubbish? So you drowned out BS with positivity. Um, new you interviews. You don't have to be the one always talking about your own experience. We've got a new you interview series every single week. Share that maybe. That's another way. Um, posts from the Numi group. If you go into Facebook, and then you go to Numi members. It is a member only page. Please note, you cannot join that unless you're a member. We've already rejected people who were from other companies trying to get in there to talk to your people. So that's why we ask the questions. If you're frustrated, why are we asking questions about who your sponsor is? Because we don't want infiltration in that page from people who are just getting there to try and cross recruit you. Okay. And that's why the rules are no cross recruiting. So there are posts in there. We've created posts about the product, posts about glutathione, posts about all sorts of things. You get into that group, you click on uh, the top bar, go to media, and then go to photographs, and you'll see albums, and there's some stuff you can just copy and paste, all done for you. Um, business from home stats. Now, let me put a slant on this. I'm not just promoting myself as health and wellness and glutathione. I promote myself as a business coach and mentor helping others. So business from home statistics are great things to post from time to time, because what does it do? It's like Chinese water torture, for want of a better word, drip, 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 drip. You're going to drip on people with little bits and bobs. You're not expecting everyone to jump on one of your posts, because in six months from now, the average of what I've seen from you is how I'm building my perspective of your brand. So a business from, from home stat won't be this silver bullet, but might be one of those things that helps build the brand for the long term. And even as your business gets going, team recognitions, great things to promote. Now, let's talk about the salesperson. On the professor, have you noticed one thing? Not one of them, please write this down, not one of them has a link that says click here to enroll or PM me or anything, because if you do, you're scaring the fish away, right? That's like going, look at my bait, right? So you're just putting up stuff to build brand in the professor. When it comes to the salesperson, a little bit different, right? It could be um, a link through to a live Zoom event you've got going on, right? So that's definitely a hook with bait on the end. It could be a link to your Numi page that uh, we've just talked about. We've got now self-replicating websites about to start with a new platform. Could be a link to the Fluid app. Within the Fluid app, be careful sharing other Numi people's stuff. I've seen numerous people share some of the posts I put on my wall without realizing it has a Numi dedicated link to my Fluid app so that when the person asks for more information, it comes to my app. For me personally, don't share my stuff if you don't check if there's a link. You might be sharing for me to get more leads and I don't want that. I've got enough. Um, Numi weekly giveaways. You know, every week, I just realized we didn't get the giveaway today, Ryan, but we'll do it next week. We have a weekly giveaway all the time, right? Um, but early on, here's a big tip. Talk to your coach, talk to your mentor. I've always been big on starting with curiosity. Okay, so not going, I just joined Numi, 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 Numi every day, because that's like playing cards. And I've just gone, here's my aces. So you can see them, there's four aces right in front of you. Instead, start out with a little bit of curiosity before you get going. This is where launches can come in well. We've got a Global Achievers Australia launch tonight, for example. Um, that's a bit of curiosity about that. What does that mean, right? So having a launch of your business, maybe you want to keep some curiosity before you launch, and then you go, boom, let's launch, right? Um, so key here is, don't overdo the salesperson or you'll scare the fish away. 
right? And I got to the point where I, uh, I realized that a while back, I was doing too much of the salesperson and I was starting to realize my pond was drying up, all right? So that's an important part. Now, so back here, let's think of this for a minute. If you're watching TV, this will make the analogy make sense. You're watching TV, uh, top left-hand corner professor, documentaries, I love them. Oh, David Attenborough, love it, right? But I won't watch them all day long or I'll go nuts, right? <laughs> Salesperson, adverts. What do you do when the adverts come on, guys? Turn the sound down, go make a cup of coffee, come back, right? So no one likes adverts. That's why if all you're doing is adverts, you wonder why no one's responding, okay? So we need the documentaries. We need the adverts in there somewhere, but we don't want to overdo it. Bottom left-hand corner, family guy or girl, what's that? You know, reality TV shows, right? And then the bottom right-hand corner, heart and humor, maybe it's a you know, a heartwarming show, or maybe it's a comedy Seinfeld or whatever. See how television stations understand in order to engage you, they don't want to go just one dimensional in any of these. They're very well rounded. So I'll we'll put it to you to look, now go back after this workshop, scroll down your Facebook feed. And if all you're doing is the family guy and girl, that's wonderful, but you're not going to make any money if you're too shy to do anything in the salesperson quadrant. If you're not doing anything in the professor quadrant, we'll start doing it now to build brand. But if all you're doing is the professor quadrant and the salesman, you're probably rejecting everybody and everyone's running away the other direction because they don't know you. So connect with heart and humor, connect with a family and guy and girl, put a bit of professor up there, put the salesman up there that don't make it a one dimensional perspective. Type in yes, if this part's been helpful, I really need to know. This is the first part of the equation, but not all of the equation. Excellent. Got some yeses. Beautiful. So I've done this for years now, and it's second nature to me now that I know that, you know, the way to present myself and so forth, it's not being inauthentic. It's just, it's revealing the parts of you that you're comfortable with uh, and so forth. Now, this is only part of the equation, right? So with that in mind, that's how it's done. But let me tell you a couple more tips before we wrap up on the interesting part. Key tips. Number one, don't post late at night. No one sees it. You're talking to, you're in an empty room yelling and no one can hear you, right? So you want to get engagement, mass exposure to do it when people are awake. Live videos gain more traction than any post you could possibly do, but everything in moderation. I know another person who started doing a live stream every day. Now nobody listens to the live streams. Too many overdoing it. So balance. But if you want to learn how to do live streams, type in live stream because that's something I've taught in the past and I can help do another workshop on how to do effective live streams. If you wish, that's certainly a, a topic that we could do. Got some yeses? Brilliant. Yeah, we'll do that another time. And then finally um, comes photos and videos. If our photos and videos don't get anywhere near as much traction as um, live stream videos do, then posts without images get the least traction as well. The biggest thing you can do to get interaction, look at my Facebook today from the last couple of days on my wall. I asked a question, boom, everybody has an opinion, right? And off it went. Questions are the key. Back to that book, right? Now, everything in moderation. If I ask questions every day, oh, what do you reckon? Blue or red today? You know, what? Uh, Cocoa Pops or Fruit Loops today? People know you're playing with them. So don't do so many questions. A bit like if your ring, telemarketer rings you and says, hi, Michael, just wanted to talk to you about our product today. Now, Michael, let me ask you about this. Michael, 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 Michael. Now, yes, people like to hear their own name, but if you overdo anything, it's obvious you're selling. Okay, so everything in moderation. And then the other key here would be add to your tribe often. We're all locked down or not all. A lot of people are locked down right now. Brilliant. What a great time to make money. Hop into Facebook groups where things you have a passion for and add friends and interact. I love photography. Do that. I love drones. Do that. I love hiking at the moment. Do that. Add more people regularly and then send a welcome message to everybody. So don't just add somebody. Send a message that goes with it. And then finally, a couple of things. Understand raving fans or what I call town criers. When you start, if you have a highly, a not a very highly engaged profile, no one's going to interact with anything. So I need you to go out and find yourself some sparring partners within your own group down or upline from your upline where that you say, listen, I'm going to post some stuff. I want you to click like on them. And when you post stuff, I'll do the same with you because people are like lemmings. It's terrible. But the more people interact and, and click like on something, it pushes it to the top of newsfeed. If you get a lot of likes and interactions, you will stay within the algorithms of Facebook at the top. You get no likes and no interaction. No one will ever see it. 
Most of your posts are ruled out from the news feed from Facebook. So get yourself a sparring partner, someone who becomes your raving fan, who posts some positive stuff here and there and do that for somebody else. Now, guys, as I said earlier, that's not the key. I'm going to go through the key now, right? I'll wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. This is not the key. This is the tip of the iceberg. Let's talk about the big secret. And this is where all my successes come from, being interested. What do I mean? Be interested, not interesting. So privately, I mean genuinely interested without an agenda. Now, people say, well, you've got an agenda. That's the point. If you haven't heard what I said, I don't. I will connect with way more people than I ever talked about Numi with no Numi agenda, right? You can smell a network marketer coming 100 miles an hour if that's all their agenda is. So I ask open-ended questions privately. So let's say, uh, we'll just get an example. Ben in my business clicks on something that I said was funny or on a post about the business or a post about nothing or a post about the sunset. I will do this. There might be 50 people that interact on the post. No one's asked a question. I'll go privately and I'll ask an open-ended question. So I might go, hey, Ben, this is the secret, guys. Write this one down. Hey, Ben, how are you, mate? I just saw your face pop up on that sunset. How good is the sunset this time of the year? Hey, I just looked at your wall and I noticed you're in lockdown, mate. How's it going? How? He can't say yes or no. He's going, oh, mate, lockdown's crap. You know, this is happening, that's happening. Oh, wow. What? What do you do for a living, Ben? You know, you're able to work from home still or blah, 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 blah. Genuinely interested, right? No, I changed from this job to that job. Oh, that's interesting. Why did you do that? What did you like about that, right? And then tell me more about it. So encourage open-ended questions. Now, how do influence and influence people taught me that at 18 years of age? The network marketing industry honed those skills. And now online, you have the luxury that you can stop, think about your question, type it in at leisure and send it. So you don't have to be, oh, what do I say right now? What do I say immediately? Because you don't have to. You can actually think about your response. You can think about your questions and you're honing your skills for real life. This is huge. So when you're genuinely interested in people, you'll find leads everywhere, right? My second secret, right? I separate contacting from inviting. What do I mean? Well, here's a funnel. Traditionally, funnels look like this. Contacting means talking to people without a newbie agenda. Inviting means inviting them to look to Numi, and then we go presenting, follow up, etc., sponsoring. So this is maybe what a normal funnel might look like. You know, contact thirty, invite twenty, ten, look at the presentation, five follow up, one sponsors. Great. Here's where most people do it wrong. They hear what I say about being interested privately, and they go, "Okay, I'm going to contact five people. I'm going to invite five people. I'm going to present to five people. I'm going to follow up five people and sponsor five. Good luck with that." <laughs> My second, and the sort of problem here is you're not doing enough contacting and you're trying to push a piece of string to the end. All of mine flow. How is that? Well, compared to those funnels, this is what my funnel looks like, right? My second secret is have way, way, way more contacting than inviting. So I might have 60 people contacted to invite just 20. I'm genuinely having 60 just open-ended conversations without an agenda. If I ask the right questions, I'll find out people have health issues, people have challenges at home, people are hating their job, people need more money, people need this, people need that. And if you ask the right questions through contacting, Facebook can privately behind the scenes can be a gold mine. And then of course, I end up sponsoring more people. Now I have some people, some of them I love dearly and they'll have a giggle because they know. I've had numerous people say to me, I like what you're saying, but it's a real slow boat to China, those words exactly, which is true. It's not a microwave. I'm teaching you how to build a pond you can fish from forever. The problem is they see it as every time they're focusing on, I've just got to put one more hook in the water, one more hook in the water. I need you to go back to Steve Scott's vision mapping and go to our original guide and be very clear about why you're doing this. In a conversation with someone in New Zealand just the other day, who's probably on right now, I asked this lady you know, about her job and what she loves about it, whatever. It turns out she hates her job. I've gone, great. All we need to do is line up how much income you earn in your job and what level that would be in NUMI and how do we get you there? And then guess what? You're going to be motivated to put the hooks out way more often because every time you're contacting somebody, you're not seeing it as a, as hard work. You're seeing it as part of the ultimate long-term goal. Lots of contacting conversations, less inviting, more sponsoring. All right. So NUMI tools to assist you guys moving forward. You have this workshop. You can play it back. It'll be in the app, right? You also have the Fluid app tool. So if you learn, if you don't know how to use a Fluid app, get with your upline. In Fluid, you've got links to lots of things. You've got Fluid apps competitions where we can generate more leads, but don't put the competition up every week. 
Again, you're overdoing it. Put it up maybe once a month or something, right? I've done it twice and that's it. You have the Facebook group and the tools that are in there you can use. And of course, the rest is up to you. We're going to give it to you. You need to take this advice and run with it. So what do you need to do right now after this short and sharp workshop on two topics? Well, number one, I would encourage you to start posting daily. You don't have to be Einstein, you know, a great cup of coffee you had, catching up with a friend for lunch, um, beautiful food you just ate, a cute dog in the street. I don't care. Just post something, right, about you. Um, balance the 80-20 rule. Don't become that annoying network marketing spammer where 90% of your posts are new me. Tone it down. Keep Protect our reputation and protect your own personal brand at the same time. Grow your tribe. Keep adding people to your tribe. Get into groups. Anytime you meet anyone new at a party, um, hey, are you on Facebook? Sure, let's tag a photo together and off we go. Grow your tribe. And then be genuine. This is the key. If you forget everything we've all said today, everything, just do this. Be genuinely interested in other people in private conversations and you will find gold nuggets in your hands left right and center. And then five, contact way, way more people than you invite. Don't have the agenda of pushing every single contact to an invite, because if you are, you're probably not going with the flow and I go with the flow. And then six, don't get sucked into the vortex, vortex post, look at other people's posts, interact with them and get off. Don't sit there scrolling through like a zombie or you're just wasting your day and your life and probably your new me business as well so guys that is a wrap for today this is the social media professionalism workshop from new me which is all about creating a new you i hope it's been helpful i'll see you on the next webcast all the best